This week, at the end of the parsha, we find the very, very famous milchama be'amalek, the war against Amalek. Even the UN decided to talk about the war against Amalek a couple of weeks ago. Maybe it's about time they actually pay attention to what's going on. Yeah, and we saw that when we look into the details of the story, it's very confusing. We have this story of Moshe Rabbeinu raising up his hands, and if his hand goes up, then they win. If his hand goes down, then they lose. What's going on there? What exactly was the story of Moshe Rabbeinu? We tried to dive in and understand what this is all about and what we can learn from this war to our war today. Exactly, exactly. There's a lot to learn from the war against Amalek to our war today. The war against Amalek that had no miracles in it. You can't even see Hashem's name in it. Hashem isn't commanding anything over there. What is going on in the war against Amalek? What is this idea of Moshe raising his hands? Where did he get that idea from? If you want to take a look, hope you enjoy it. So this week, Parshat B'Shalach, I want to talk about the end of the Parsha, where we find the war of Am Yisrael with Amalek. The first war Am Yisrael had, just as they go out of Mitzrayim, a few days after they leave Mitzrayim, they are already fighting Amalek. Now, we've discussed this war so many times in the past, both in Parashat Ki Tetzeh, also in Parashat B'Shalach, we mentioned it in previous videos, also overall in different Parashat, we've mentioned it here and there, because this war is very fundamental for our emunah, for our belief, for our nation as a nation. But this year, I want to focus on the technicality of the war, of what happens in the war, like we like to do in our videos, dive into the Psukim, try to understand the Pshat level of the Psukim, the simple level of the Psukim, what the Torah is saying. And when you look at the Pshat level, when you look at the story of this war, a few questions come to mind. Number one is, what's the deal with Moshe's hands? Why is Moshe suddenly raising his hands? There is no commandment over here to Moshe to raise his hands. There's no commandment for him to take a staff with him. Moshe just seemingly decides to raise his hands, and when he puts them down, Am is suddenly losing the war, so he has to keep them up. So then, Aaron and Chul, his two helpers, Aaron, his brother, Chul, his nephew, come along and help him keep his hands up. And with that, Am managed to beat Amalek and end the war. So number one, you have to ask, what's the deal with Moshe's hands? Why is he raising his hands? Why does he need to raise his hands? We know the Mishnah. We know the Midrash. We've discussed this many, many times. But again, on the Pshat level, what's the deal with his hands? Why does he need to lift him up? And again, on top of that, why does he need Aon and Chul to support him? What is that support all about? What is going on over here in the war with Amalek? Yeah, that's a great question. And you know, even if we look at what Chazal say, they say, are his hands doing the war? No, it's when he raises his hands, then we're Mechavel Hashem Shabai. And when they're down, then we're not. But I don't get it. Again, so if it's about a spiritual thing. So forget the heads. Have him daven. What is the fact that two people are helping him hold his hands? It, it's a completely technical thing. If his hands are held up, okay, now we're winning the war. If his hands are down, if it's not about that, it's about the heart, it's about the kavana. So it should be if he's praying. Who says you need to pray with your hands up? What is this really about? There's something in the story of the hands that I think we miss when we read the psukim quickly. And I think the first thing to notice here is also a comparison between the beginning of our parsha and the end of the parsha. Because at the beginning of the parsha, we have something very similar. We have a moment where there's an enemy that's coming against Am Yisrael. But Moshe's response is almost the exact opposite of the response here. There, on Yamsuf, he says to Am Yisrael, Ki tiyatzvu u'u et Yeshuat Hashem. You stand. Hashem ilachem lachem v'atem tacharisho. You're going to be the ones that are standing still, that aren't moving. And Hashem will fight the war for you. Here, Moshe, the first thing he says, he sees the enemy come upon them and he realizes this is a different story. And he turns to Yoshua and says, you choose people and go out and fight the war. And me and my staff, my godly staff, we're going to be standing on the top of the mountain. It totally swaps. Before Hashem is fighting and you're standing, here you're fighting and me, who represents the connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and the staff, Matei Elohim, we're going to be Nitzah. We're going to be standing still while you're out there fighting. So something here is completely changing and as Rashi says, Sehi Lachem, where's he going out to? Go where? They came and fought against him. You don't need to go anywhere. But Rashi says, go out of the cloud. Go out of the spiritual world. This isn't going to be another spiritual war with the sea split and covering and fighting for you. This is going to be the first real war. And maybe as the first real war, this is supposed to be our, our lesson of how a war of Am Yisrael needs to look like. What is it all about? And the first thing we know is Sehi Lachem Bamala. You have to step out of the spiritual world. You have to be ready to go face the danger face to face and fight a real war. But here comes the other side of it. Because what is Moshe Rabbeinu supposed to do in this war? He says, I'm going to need Tzav. I'm going to stand there. I'm going to be there with you. You'll be out there fighting and I'm going to be here all the time behind you. And what am I going to have? I'm going to have my staff with. And when he raises his hand, the Pasuk says, he raises his hand, he puts his hand down. We in our eyes see Moshe Rabbeinu praying. Why? Because we assume that he's lifting his hands and this is how you pray. But actually, the idea of lifting both hands only comes later on when it says his hands are weak and then they help him hold it up. But in the first Pasuk, 
It doesn't talk about two heads. It talks about one head. He raises his head. Why is he raising his head? What does he have in his hand? The staff. Where did we just see him raise his hand? Kriyat Yamsu. Hashem tells him, raise the staff and with your hand, put it against the sea. And that's how you will split the sea. So if you look at this picture and zoom out, you'll see Moshe Rabbeinu doing his miracle, holding up his hand like he has done many times. But as opposed to this time, the sea is being the ones doing the miracle. This time, the ones doing the miracle is Am Yisrael themselves fighting down below. And maybe that's the depth of what Chazal are telling us. It's not that Am Yisrael, you know, forgot HaKadosh Baruch who lost Emuna and then they were failing in the war. And when his hands are technically held up, suddenly they get their Emuna and they're winning the war. It's a lot more than that. The words are that when Moshe Rabbeinu is holding up his hands, they, not Moshe Rabbeinu, they are mechavnim libam l'shamay. They're busy fighting. They didn't stop fighting. But their fighting now is mechuvad. They're fighting the war, but their hearts, their intentions are aimed at HaKadosh Baruch Hu, are aimed at the real purpose that they're fighting this war. It's almost like calibrating. In Hebrew, you use that term lechaven, or like tuning a piano. When you're setting it to be exactly on spot. What are they mechaven? They're mechaven the fact that they are the miracle of Moshe's hand. When Moshe raises his hand, the miracle is now going to be expressed through you fighting down there. And the moment that Moshe puts his hand down, there's a disconnect. Moshe finished his miracle and Am Yisrael are fighting below. They didn't lose their Emunah, but it's not calibrated anymore. It's not set up. We don't see that image where Moshe's hand, the famous hand that's been doing miracles. It's funny when you think about it. As I'll say, what Moshe's hand is winning the war or losing the war? We see Moshe's hands winning wars all the time. Every single minute until now, it was Moshe's hand going up and doing this. Moshe's hand going up and doing that, but not the war. The war now is different. Now Moshe's hand is raised up and down below Am Yisrael are fighting the war. And I think this is the lesson for every war that Am Yisrael will fight from this day on. It's a real war. We have to go out and fight it with weapons. We don't just sit back. Ooh, the opposite. Moshe is the one who's mitiatsev and caring for us and praying for us and trying to help us from on top. But we have to go out and fight that war. But we have to realize that we are bringing about God's miracles in this world. Even though we're doing it with our own hands, even though we're fighting with our own hands, we're risking our life. At the end, if we're mechaven our hearts, we will win the war and we will bring about through this war the miracle of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Just as the sea is split when Moshe raises his hand, Am Yisrael wins the war below and fights the war and wins the war below while Moshe raises his hand. Very good, very good, exactly. We always say that you have to pay attention to the words the Torah uses and the words the Torah doesn't use and what the Torah is telling us. And number one, we have to notice that the war begins with Amalek approaching Am Yisrael. Vayavo Amalek. Amalek is there. They're fighting. And then Moshe understands he has to respond to the fight. And when you read the Psukim, there's something very clear that's missing from the Psukim. From everything that we've seen until now, every plague that came on the Egyptians, Makot Mitzayim, Yamsuv, the splitting of the sea, everything that happened, you always saw Hashem telling Moshe what to do. Or you saw that this was done based on what Hashem told Moshe to do. Al Pi Hashem, just like we just saw them leaving and walking from Refidim, it was Al Pi Hashem. They left because of HaKadosh Baruch But when you look at these Psukim here, there's no commandment for this war. HaKadosh Baruch doesn't say anything about this war. The fact that Moshe raises his hands in order to succeed in this war and then he puts his hand up. Moshe Rabbeinu telling Yeshua to choose people and go fight. In Pshat level of the Psukim, HaKadosh Baruch isn't there. This is all Moshe's tactics to win the war that has come onto them. The war that Amalek began with them. And until the war is over, you can't find HaKadosh Baruch name. Only after the war happens, that's when you see HaKadosh Baruch telling Moshe, remember this war forever. Remember this war for generations to come. Because this is my war. This is my war of HaKadosh Baruch in this world. And then you have to ask yourself, okay, so what's so special about this war? What is so unique about this war? And maybe just like you're saying, number one, this is a literal, physical, earthly war between two nations. And this war has no crazy miracles in it. No splitting of the sea. No hail coming down from the sky. No Moshe raising his hand with the staff to do a miracle. But what does he do with his hands? His hands are the emunah, emunah meaning to say, the way you look at his hands, this is the way you're going to view the world. Is Moshe there? Is he doing the miracles? Or is Amisal fighting? And based on those hands, as the Mishnah, as the Midrash says, do Amisal wait for the miracles to happen? Or on the other hand, are they trusting themselves too much? Or are they fighting with their own hands, but trusting HaKadosh Baruch Hu and aiming their thought and aiming their machshava towards HaKadosh Baruch Hu, understanding that this war is for Hashem. Hashem ba'amalek. This is what the war is about. This is what's going on behind this war. And this is why Moshe, first of all, he stands there and then he sits there again, going back a few psukim just before to Moshe hitting the rock and getting the water out. HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells him, tomorrow I'm going to be standing on the rock and I'm going to do this miracle. Moshe is trying to repeat this, going on and standing on the top of the giva. But then Moshe, it's getting too heavy. He has to sit down. And then with the help of everyone else, with the help of Aaron Hu, he still keeps his hands up to show Am Yisrael that they have to keep on fighting. You know, being three months into the war here in El Yisrael, 100 plus days already of war, it's hard not to hear other things going on in the Psukim here based on what we see in our day-to-day -day life because when I read these Psukim this week, 
seeing how for Moshe raising his hands, it was heavy for him. And he slowly, slowly, his hands started to come down. And when his hands slowly, slowly started to come down, then Am Yisrael would start losing the battle and he had to keep his hands up with strength, with koach, with might in order for Am Yisrael in the battlefield to win the war. It's hard not to hear the resemblance to what's going on over here in the war in Eretz Yisrael with the relationship between the front lines, between the battlefield and what's going on back at home. The battlefield, the front lines, our soldiers that are fighting over there, they need the support from us back here at home. They need to know that we back here are still holding up our hands up high and looking towards HaKadosh Baruch Hu and begging him to help our soldiers win this war. They need it. They need it in order to continue pressuring and in order to continue pushing and winning the war. Because once we start letting our hands down, once we stop understanding and realizing that we're still at war here and the enemy's still there trying to hit us and we start messing around with things we shouldn't be messing around with and we start discussing things that have nothing to do with this war and have nothing to do with winning this war, then this affects the front lines too. This affects the soldiers in the front line too. And in turn hurts their efforts. It takes them out of their aim, out of what they're trying to do. When we lose focus, they lose focus. We all lose focus. And in Chazir Khalila, slowly, slowly, Amalek starts to overcome us. And that's why we need to hold our hands up high. And it's hard sometimes to hold our hands up high. And that's why there's so many supporters. Even Moshe, who's supporting the battlefield, has his supporters to support him. I want to who are supporting Moshe, who's supporting the battlefield. Because we need supporters, to the supporters, to continue supporting. Because to stay focused, to stay highly disciplined towards our goals of winning this war, we have to show strength. We have to continue supporting each other and supporting the front lines and supporting the ones who are doing the actual fighting in the front lines. This is what it means It's a physical war. It's 100% a physical war, but they need our support in the back. They need our tefillah. They need our davening. And you know, also this week, I had the chance to sit with a few incredible human beings, really incredible human beings, people that are just on a different level, different level for me, for sure. Hadass Levenstein, the wife of Elisha Levenstein, Hashem Yikom Damo, that was killed a few weeks ago and as a guy who learned the year under me in Yerucha, and also with Rob and Jen Early, who their son, Binyamin Hashem Yikom Damo, was killed a month and a half ago, also in Aza. And you hear the stories about these Kedoshim that were killed. You hear the stories about Elisha and Binyamin, the way Adas describes Elisha being a yeshiva bachor, a guy who's 40 years old, who works in high tech, but yet all his being, all his essence, he was a yeshiva bachor. He walked around with his farm. He walked around with the lists of needles that he wanted to correct about himself. He was literally like an 18-year-old guy in yeshiva just in the world with a wife and six kids. And he had his job and everything else, but he was still in a mindset of a yeshiva guy who cares about his avodat Hashem. He wants to improve and be better is in his avodat Hashem and his chesed to others to be the best Jewish person he can be. And then Binyamin Hashem become the more a younger guy who with all his essence, with all his being, what he wanted is to be in the land of El Tisa, connect to the land of El Tisa, out of Torah, out of Yiddishkeit, out of mitzvahs, finding a Kaddish Baruch in the land of El Tisa. And when you hear the stories about these incredible human beings, when you hear the families behind these incredible human beings, it's hard not to think about the very famous Piska in Rav Kook in Orota Milchama, where Rav Kook talks about the previous generations, the Dorota Rishonim, these generations of the Tanakh, where we had these strong warriors who would fight these fights, Avraham Avinu, who would go and fight Nimrod, and David Amelech, who fought, and Am Yisrael, who fought in Yetziad Mitzrayim against Amalek. On the one hand, these great warriors who knew how to fight in the battlefield, like the strongest warriors of all, in the most earthly, in the most terrible places of all. Yet, on the other hand, they were so soft, they were so delicate with the neshama. They had this special neshama that was able to give us Tehillim by David Amelech, that was able to receive a sale that he brought just next week in Parashat Yitro, right after this Milchama. It's the same nation. It's the same people that can go out and fight Amalek, fight the most earthly nation, the opposite of Am Yisrael, in the lowest of the lowest battlefields. And from there, go to Matan Torah, the highest point a human being has ever been, us as a nation we have ever been to, in Matan Torah, receive a sale that he brought. Says Rav Kook, these generations knew how to have it all together. Were able to have these sides in one personality, in one human being, because there were such special generations. And says Rav Kook, our generations are having these neshamas again. And when you hear these stories of Adisha Hashem become the Mobi, Yamin Hashem become the Mobi, you can hear these neshamas. You can hear this is what Rav Kook was talking about. Where Rav Kook says that the Milchama, Milchemet Hashem, Haita Be'Akarap Nimit, the war of Hakadosh Baruch Hu was within them. They knew exactly what the war was about. They knew exactly what they were fighting for. With every piece of their soul, with every piece of their being, this is what they were fighting for. This is what they wore with all they being. These are the type of warriors you need in order to win this kind of war against Amalek. This war, this war that on the one hand, Moshe sits there with his hands up and is waiting for Amisad to turn to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but on the other hand, you have to fight hard in the battlefield with all the tactics you have, with everything you have in order to win the war, in order to win the earthly war. But this requires this special generation of warriors. This requires these special people to have this fight. And looking around us and hearing the stories that are coming out of the battlefield, we really have the privilege, we have an incredible schut, a merit to have this kind of generation here now and all we can do is back here at home support them and support the ones supporting them and continue holding our hands up high in order to give them the strength in order to give them the power to win and to get the victory in the battlefield so true so true and you know maybe this also explains this strange story about Moshe's hands being heavy why are they suddenly becoming heavy Moshe's hands you know who soon will hold up these huge rocks and they don't become heavy why can't he hold his own hands up but maybe this is part of it all to fight battles where you just raise your hand and the seas are split, you raise your hand and 
the hail comes, those are spiritual battles, which are unhuman. And therefore, you don't become heavy and you don't become tired. But these wars that Am Yisrael now has to fight, it's a real war. It's hard. It's not magic. It's going to be hard. It's going to be painful. It's going to be heavy. It's going to be tiring. Tiring, as you said, not only for the people in the battlefield, tiring also for the people standing and watching and trying to support. And there are moments where you feel weak. You feel tired. You feel heavy already. And those hands, as you said, we have to keep holding up high until Vayihi Yadav Emunah. Emunah has many meanings. There's Emunah of us with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, as we said, everything being in tune with why we're here, why we're fighting this war. But Emunah is also in each other. Emun, trust, believing in those out there fighting, them believing in you. When we're all together, all in tune, then we can truly win the war. Bain, bain, all we have to say is Biyachad Enetzach. Together we will win. The supporters, the supporters, the supporters, the battlefield, everybody together fighting this war for Am Yisrael, for HaKadosh Baruch Hu's name here in Eretz Yisrael against the evil of the world. And Bezrat Hashem, together we will win. Amen, amen. Shkoyach. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. And we'll talk again next week.